happiness and opportunities. We worship you. We thank you for who you are in our life. We just want to say thank you for what you've been doing, what you've done, and what you continue to do in our life. It is part of the abundance of your love that we have seen today. We just want to worship you today. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing. We say thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you are doing. We are doing. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything you are done. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Let's continue in that same mode of worship. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity that you have given us to see another day. Anytime we wake up it is out of the abundance of your love and grace that you've given us opportunity to come to your presence we just want to thank you and that is why you are called Jehovah that is why you are called Jehovah what you said you will do that is what you will do that is why you are the most. Jehovah, Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high God. Jehovah, you not let the earth tremble. He will not let the earth tremble. My God will not let the earth tremble. He will not let the earth tremble. Hallelujah. He's a never-never. Hallelujah. He's a never-never. Jehovah reign and let the earth He reign and let the earth tremble. My God reign and let the earth tremble. He reign and let the earth tremble. Hallelujah. He's a heavenly language. He's a heavenly language. Is our never language. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You reign in our life. We thank you for the opportunity to gather on to me this morning. It is out of the abundance of your love and grace that we have seen another day. Every day we wake up. It is not because that we, we are equipped by ourselves. It is not by our own strength. It is by your help. Yes, oh Lord, Lord. Let your name be exalted. Let yes, your name Lord. be magnified in our life. Father, we thank yes, you on behalf of all members of our household and the house of faith that, our, that we can gather on today. It is by your sacrifice. It is by your it is by your word that we, we have life. It is yes, out of Lord. the proclamation of who you are that we are, that we, we that we've received mercy. They say your mercies are new every day. But I come to you this morning to worship you to in our heart. We, 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 we pray unto the old to, Lord to, to, for you to be able to reveal your will to the will for us to be able to, 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 to speak your mind, to receive your word, for these words not to continue to just you know, come and go for, but for it to bring forth fruit in our life, so that we can live for you, so that we we, we can deny flesh, so that we can we, we can grow in Christ and to reveal you, not to reveal ourselves, not to, not to reveal flesh, but to reveal you for people to see you when they see us, for us to obey you through our actions, not just to hear these words and pretend that it's mm -hmm. being best in our life, but for it to bear forth fruit, the fruit that, 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 that brings, you know, forth more fruit that, 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 that multiplies mm -hmm. and, and grows in the world for people to know who you are in Jesus' name. Father, thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are. 
thank you, Lord. thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your provision, for yes, your protection. Lord. You are a rock and a helper. Father, let yes, your name be glorified. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank Lord. You, In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, everybody, once again for joining. Uh, I hope as we, you know, continue in the same uh, topic that we've been talking about. I, I know uh, for the past few days we've been talking about this same topic, and I know, we've, you know, in my mind, as I've been listening, everything has been really talked about. The, the multiple points about relationship that we've, you know, talked about. And I hope uh, as God is revealing his mind to us, we can, you know, depend on him. Because like I said, the relationship that we really want in our life is the relationship with God. Because the, if the relationship of God is the one that def defines all the other relationships that we have. I know the point in our reading has been, you know, pointed onto the negative relationship, you know, you know, letting go. That is what we've been talking about, about bad relationship. But, you know, for us to really define relationships that we let go, we have to actually know the positive, positive relationships, you know, for us to determine these relationships are bad. There has to be a foundation, a structure for our relationships as meant to be. And that is why we have to actually look onto Christ, you know. Because when you look at Christ, most of us, you know, we, we look at what the manifestation of God in Christ Jesus. But when you look at the relationships Christ formed, even physically, without the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, you know. And oh, the Holy Spirit is what led Christ to relate with every other person, with law and all that. And one of the points that was made yesterday by Sister Tolu was, you know, you know, we could be looking at this from a, from a perspective of saying that, oh, uh, people, we sh people that we should let go. What about us personally? What about what kind of relationship to what kind of actions or attitudes do we have to other people? Because, you know, maybe we're trying to get rid of people in our life, but what about people trying to get rid of us in our lives too? Because maybe we are not exhibiting the right relationship. So for us, we need to examine ourselves too, if we are Christ-like, if we are his true followers. Because when you think about the way Christ related with his disciples and the people that he met every day, even this, People that were trying to trap him, he gave them opportunity. And, and that is how we are called to be, to imitate Christ. You know, said a son of man didn't come to be served, but to serve. You know, our call for us is to be able to reveal who Christ is in all circumstances from our home, our workplaces, and all those places for us. Do we truly reflect who Christ is? Because if we don't, then how can we really judge, you know, how can we be in a place of determining the relationships to let go? For us, it's a call for submission first, so that God is, we are fully in Christ and we are walking along in line with these ways. Because like I said, Christ is the way to, to the Father. It's not only, you know, prof professing it, we have to become him. We have to live like he lived, the life that he lived. Then even true is dead because, like I said, if you look at Paul, when he, you know, to be conformed unto his death. And that is why the call for our life is to die every day so that we are now made new all the time until we get to perfection in Christ when we are with him. But the call for our life is a, is a, is a call to live like he lived while he was on earth. And most of the important, die like that daily in our lives so that we will fully be resurrected with him. And if all, all those three parts, you know, they are reflected mostly in our relationship. Because people, you know, this was a point, you know, that you know, when we were at church, it was discussed about those things. That is where we reflect who God is in our relationship. 
So for us to be focused on letting something go, then that means we have to let ourselves go for God to truly work in us. Then we can, you know, then we can, the Holy Spirit will help us to manifest this world. Then it will guide us into right relationship. And it will, you know, it will help us to reflect God to those ones that, you know, that are not living right or living in the light for them to come to the fullness of the knowledge of God in our life. And for us, most importantly, when you think about what we're going to talk about today, you know, even though we're letting go, we're talking about letting go, but it talks about us too, about our participation and what we, you know, get involved with. So today our text, in our, the third, uh, third our final day of our topic relationship is taken from Ephesians, book of Ephesians, chapter five. And I read, I, I, I read uh, the Ephesians from, from chapter one. So I just run through it quickly. It's a living in the light. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his children. Like I said, we are called, you know, to imitate him. And how can we imitate that? Christ is the way to God. We have to know, come to the fullness of the knowledge of how he lived his, his death and his resurrection, because that is the way, that is a pathway for us to receive life and abide in Christ. In, in verse two, it says, live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. See, how Christ lived. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. So let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, they are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. So can we see that? That's what I say, relationships, right? You know, that is where we reflect who God is. So if we are, if, if God is not in us, the relationships and all the reflections of who we are will be in our relationship. Like I said, you say obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral and impure or greedy person will inherit, inherit the kingdom of God. Inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshipping the things of the world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger of God will fall on, on all who disobey him. Don't participate in these things. In these things people do. For you were once full of darkness but now you have light from the lord so live as people of the of light but these lights with, within you produces only what is good right and true carefully determine what pleases god pleases the lord take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness instead expose them it is shameful to even talk about the things that the ungodly people do in secret but their evil intention will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So for us, we should even be separated from all these things. And as we are separated from all these things, then it will reflect in our relationship because now we are living, we are living as Christ, we are imitating Christ. Is where he lived. Then all these other relationships, it is now easy for us to let it go. But if we are still, you know, in in the mold of obscene talk, foolish jokes, and all those things, and this is I'm tell, telling you personally, because once you, you know, because in a break room, once you get involved in those things, those are the kind of relationships you will have because you, you, you know, you, you, you like foolish talk, obscene jokes, things that doesn't glorify who Christ is then it is hard for you to let those relationships go because those are the reflections of who you are. But if you are imitating God by yielding to Christ's way, all right, 
then those things will not be yours. Then it is easy for you to let go of all those relationships because they are not reflective of who you are. But as I said, it's a self-examination. If we are doing that, that means God is revealing it himself to us in through our relationship, the kind of people we are still are. And he wants us to change. That is why one of, that's why I like this particular third day of our uh, of, of, of our relationship. And that we're talking about. So let's let us let us just read. You say letting go of a, of a per, letting go of a person doesn't mean you no longer love them. It just means the relationship is not right for you. How should you handle? Like you said, don't participate in all these things. These things doesn't reflect who Christ is. You know, doesn't mean that. But it, you know, as as you see yourself, like all these things is not what God wants from you through the revelation of His Word in Christ Jesus then for us is to go to him so that we are remade in him, so that we all these things are being cleansed away. And, you know, doesn't mean that we hate the people, that we indulge in these things, but we know that is not the will of God for us. Then, like you said, it doesn't mean that we should, you know, we no longer love them, but we know it's not what is right because that is not the will of God for our life. So first, you say, how should you handle letting go? The first is a gradual separation is sometimes the best solution because now once those kind of t- 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 things are coming up, obscene jokes, coerce, all those things, then you, we, you know, we, we try to you know, you know, leave gradually, separate ourselves because that is not the will of God for our life. Because as, like I said, it is not something that we can, you know, just stand up and go because we were involved with it. But now we continue, you know, we we separate ourselves gradually from all the situation. Yesterday there was, uh, there, 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 there was a contribution. I think it was Sister Bridget that said it. That you know, when you call for too long, and you you know, you try to come up with things to talk about. You say, okay, you know, with love, with grace, I'm about to go do something. That is it. You know, gradually the person will start noticing that we are not interested in all those, you know, jokes or all those things that you know doesn't justify or glorify Christ. They say gradual separation is sometimes the best solution. There are relationships you need to get out of your for your own good, but because you have a call to call, doesn't mean that it should be raped. And most of us, as I say, because okay, now I belong to Christ, then you know we make other people fall short too. Because we will reflect, man, please don't come, you know, we, we cannot say, oh, please don't come up with me and be jokes again. Please, I don't want to, you know. Nah, because God is using us to, to change other people as God is using people to change us. Too. Because if we, without us, you know, getting in those jokes or getting in that relationship where those jokes, we will not be, God will not reflect who we are to ourselves. Even. We will not know. Because like I said, you know, I can be in a vacuum and isolation thinking, ah, I am changed. But in, in relationships that I form with my children, my wife, God will reveal to me if anger, if, uh, if obscene jokes and all those things are selling me because I will not know if I don't get into a relationship. That's why relationships are important. It reflects who we are in Christ Jesus. If what we com- it comes out of us in our relationship is peace, love, that means Christ is living in us. If he's not, that means we should come back to God. That is the very importance of it. And once we know this, it's a gradual process for us to now go back to him and reduce the cord, not just go abruptly. Because if we can go back in isolation, we would not know if we are truly changed. But a gradual process for us to, you know, to not just cut the cord or rip the cord, but to just gradually cut it. Dissolving a relationship is stressful. So to try and do end. So try to end it graciously. If the cord that binds you is constant phone calls, emails, and visits, that's a good place to start, you know? Reduction in visits, less phone call, you know, just asking, how are you doing? Then that is it. No, oh, what did you eat? You know, you know, what, you know go getting to the point. Number two, you say, don't keep, don't keep going back. Some of us are just, so nice that we can end the relationship and move forward. We keep going back, second guessing ourselves and reevaluating our decision. Make it one time and make it right and make it decisive. Often people will come back to entice you by suggesting you were wrong the first time, 
That's why you must resolve any doubts before you make the decisions in the first place. If you find yourself in a pattern of going back to old or unhealthy relationships, you may be drinking from a wrong well. And this is very important to us. Most of us, we, we, we are empty and we are looking for something. But that thing is already revealed to us that is Christ that we truly need. We don't really need many of the things that we think we find pleasure in. A real pleasure. It is in the presence of God. But most of us, we are looking, you know, there's something, oh, okay, ah, let me go back. You know, even though, you know, it's been revealed to us that these associations doesn't just, you know, doesn't glorify who Christ is. But based on the fact that we, 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 we are empty and we don't know who to go to, we go back to the same and we, it, it begins and it turns to a pattern in life like it's been revealed in what we are, we, we're talking about it. And it, be, it turns out to a pattern. Then we, you know, we, we focus on, on things that are unhealthy instead of focusing on Christ because that is the true relationship. Like I said from the beginning, a relationship with Christ and God, it, sh it should be, you know, the stronghold for all of that relationship, the strong, the stronghold of truth to all of that relationship. If we are, you know, if if we are, if we, if we are good, or if we are in love with God, then our relationship will translate, you know, it, it, to, to translate to loving other people, to loving our children, our coworkers. You know, loving them doesn't mean we should, like it's been revealed for the past two days, doesn't mean that we should, you know, be, do the same things that they're doing. That's a, that, that's a distinction. Loving them, the way God has commanded us to love them, doesn't mean that we should participate in what they're doing. We should reveal who Christ is to them. Not, you know, condemn them, but we should reveal that there's an opportunity for life in them. And like I said, like you said in this instance, you may be drinking from a wrong world. You may try. You may be trying to feel an emptiness in your heart that only God can feel. And like I said, all the emptiness in our life, it's only God that can feel. It's not even, you know, it is a fact. Because it's God that leads us to where the, what, he, what he will use to equip us. The Holy Spirit leads us, you know, to, to all our needs. You know, if it's, you know, family, if it's children, he's the one that leads us on that path too. So our fulfillment is in Christ Jesus. When Jesus met the woman at the well, she had been through five failed marriages and was living with a man number six. He told her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never test. We will be filled. And our fulfillment and our equipment is in only in Christ Jesus. In all our things, we, you know, you know, it's been well documented that even the, the fact that, you know, all our lives when we were young, we, you know, socioeconomics would tell us, you know, if we have money, we can resolve many things. But we've known that people, even with all the money in the world, they have still struggles. They are still, you know, unfulfilled. And even the people with no money, with Christ, they are fulfilled because they find peace and joy and they know who Christ is and they know their hand that is. Victory is already in Christ. All they need to do is to test it for all who went to you to the end. Those ones are the real, true victory. They are the victorious. And they know the will of God for them. So for us, our fulfillment in all circumstances is in Christ. So for us, our thirst for relationship should be a thirst for God. To seek him, to know his mind. Then he will now reveal his will for us in all relationships. Most importantly, in our home, in our business, in our community. But the water that I shall give him, shall give him, will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So for us today, the call that we have today, it is a call to surrender to God so that his will will be translated in all relationships that we have. So that we will not participate in things, but we will reveal him in all those things. So it is easier for us to let things go. Because like I said, if there's something you need for us, it will always be attracting, attractive to us. So that means we should be fully cleansed. Because 
if, if in my heart, I still, you know, I still, you know, like these obscene jokes and all these things, then I'll always want to go back to that relationship, you know, go back, oh, in the midst of, you know, the break room, oh, scream and yell, laugh, you know, joke and all those things. That is God revealing to us that this is still what is in, still inside of us. So for us to truly imitate God, like the Ephesians 5 is saying, we should yield, submit ourselves to him and live a life, like verse 2, Ephesians 5 says, live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. He pleased in our romance of God. So we should love God and offer ourselves by surrendering to him as ourselves as a living sacrifice unto him, for him to fill us up with his spirit. And for us, it is now easy for us to let go of all the things that are not associated with him. Because when you think about what Christ was all, what God revealed to the Israelites, you know, always told them to separate from all forms of unholiness. And for us, you know, it might be too radical when we think about, oh, destroy all these people, destroy everything. Because that is, for us, translated into separation from all forms of iniquity that can trap us. And that is reflected mostly in our relationship. All, our, all the things we do, our character, uh, who we are, it's reflected in our relationship. So for us, if we are still showcasing all these things that they said don't participate, it's, it will be revealed in our, in our relationships. You know, anger, outbursts of, outburst of wrath, you know, obscene jokes, all the things that was revealed in these Ephesians 5. We will re it will be reflected in our relationships. So for us, a call for surrender. So let's have contributions today. Thank you guys for hearing my, my rest. Let's have contributions today, the final day of our relationships. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. We just Morning, thank man. God. Brothers, I was really, you have broken everything down. We thank God for the way and manner that the Holy Spirit takes you through to break everything down. You have uh, exhausted everything. We just thank God, you know. Uh, God has taken us through the uh, part from part one to today, uh, dealing with relationship. And I believe that uh, the, the Holy Spirit has really imparted us, each and every one of us, to know how to handle relationship, to know when to draw the line, to know how to handle it, how, you know, to, you know, uh, allow, uh, use the God's wisdom to separate ourselves without uh, offense. And, uh, you know, like uh, Brian has already broken everything down, you know, like, you know, this, what we have just uh, read, there's something that just came to me that sometimes really the thing that keep us in a healthy relationship is uh, probably the only person we can go to to cancel us when we have a, when we have challenge or whatever, you know, we just go to the person, call the person, say, see you, see you, uh -huh. you know, the person will just say something uh, to encourage us and all. But we are told here that it is only God, the only Christ that can feed that emptiness in us. No man can really do it. And sometimes even the people we confide in, uh, some of them, we will gossip with whatever we discuss with them. They may not really give us a head in a counsel that will help us. You know, like I was saying to say the other time, you know, when I have, if I have issue with my, with my husband, I know the person I will talk to. I know, I know some of my friends, I cannot, I cannot just bring, not that they hate me. You know, they, they will even want to take side with me, say, but that's not what I need. You know, so we have seen everything and uh, I, I thank God, you know, like Brian was saying just now, you know, our, our relationship with Christ, we actually, the, the, the love we have for him, we actually, you know, help us to be able to handle relationship. It is very important, you know, we don't have to be emotional about it. 
any relationship that is not helping you spiritually, review it. The other day I was talking about a call, like, uh, you know, this person, she's my relative, you know. She calls me, talk and talk and talk. Yesterday night she even called me, I did pick. I did pick. Because, you know, like what we have even read uh, today now, that you don't have to be emotional about it going on and back again. I don't have the book with me, this uh, uh, daily something. I don't have it. I didn't even know that, you know, the next one will, will even emphasize that, that aspect, you know. I didn't pick because I, I don't, I didn't pick. I have, I want to view, make use of my time, you know, where, you know. So, we should be able to draw the light, brethren. It is very important. It's not, we are not quarreling. I don't have anything against her. Maybe once in a while, I can just call her, oh, sorry. I just couldn't, I respond to you the other day. I was not in the mood. I mean, it's as simple as that. We just thank God. We pray that everything that we have learned, we actually, you know, be work in our experience so that it become flesh in us. We are able to apply it to life situations, you know, because like, you know, that was one of the things Brian was saying, just if all that we are hearing, we are not putting them in practice, of no use. But you see, when we really put them in practice, we try to be the dual of it. God knows, Holy Spirit knows. He, he will not grant us the uh, enable, en enable, you know, will enable us, give us the enabling grace. So, you know, when we're able to say true from one, another one will come again, another one will come again. That is, you know, how we are being built. We are being built because the Lord Jesus Christ is, is, is our inheritance. The Lord wants to build in, in us everything that is in Christ because, because we are, we are co-heir with him. Christ is glorified. So God wants us to put on Christ. So the life of Christ is to be built in us. Everything that is of the flesh must live, have to go. And we know the property of, we know that soul is, is, is where the issue is. Our, our new creation man did never sin. He went to sleep, he's awakening, he's regenerated. That's not where the problem is. The problem is in their soul. Uh, what are the, 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 the things that make up the soul? The mind, the, 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 the emotion, the will. Those are the property of the soul. And these are the things that the Lord wants to deal with in this church age. If we are going to have a part in the kingdom, if we are going to, to actually put on Christ, the Bible says we shall see him as he is. Christ has been glorified. The Bible says that that are called are justified and glorified, but we know we are not yet there. But we, we are working, God is working in us. So that is why this, this daily uh, devotional book is it, so nice because it deals with our everyday life situations, how to handle this, what to expect, and what to do. So we, I, I encourage us to, to actually look at it, to be deliberate about this matter. No two ways to it. The Bible says that this, this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit, it is clear. So we must be deliberate about our character because God wants to build the moral beauty of Christ into us. Our character is, is God is consigned. At this church, God is consigned. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. God bless you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, man. Like, like I said, it, and like you said to man, it is very important. Our relationships, it is what you know. This is where we reflect who we are, who we really are, and that is why we, you know, you say out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, what do we truly have? In, our, in ourselves, you know, we can, we, you know, that's why I said that I put up on like this. You know, most of us, we can say, oh, you know, I want to, you know, I want to let go. This relationship is not healthy enough for me. But what, 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 who are you truly reflecting to? Is it, is it based out of your selfishness or, or who you are? You know, and that's why I say like we, you know, our character will, you know, it is, is it, you know, it is based on our actions. Our obedience to God is based on our actions. What do we truly do? You know. 
do we involve ourselves in things that we're not supposed to be involved with? Do we, do we, you know, gossip and all those things? That is what he said. Don't be, don't participate in those things. Those things does not reflect who Christ is. And just like our sister said, they don't reflect who Christ is. So for us, we should examine ourselves. What is the basis of our own relationships? You know, is it God that is, 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 is it the foundation of our own lives? For us to now determine, oh, this relationship is not right. But if we live in Christ, like I said, he said, if 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 you look from the beginning, if we if there's love in us, that means that then we belong to Christ. Then that is how our relationships will be, you know. It, it will be reflected as a love will be reflected in our relationship. And even people, when they see us, they will not even be in a position to always want to gossip with us because when everything we reflect is Christ, then, then, then we can actually have the impact as true followers of Christ to reflect who God is. So our relationship will now transcend and people will now see God in us. Then nobody will now want to come up to us with, ah, you know, be- that alone is the true separate, gracious separation. Because now we reflect who Christ is. We're not going to reflect his flesh. You know. And most of us do. That's what I say. It is very important. And this is personal to me. Like I said, our relationship, you know, the, what we exhibit in our relationship, truly God is show, using that to show us that we are incomplete without him. And this is a call for us to change. And that's why when you look at it, you say don't participate because we are, you know, in flesh. We are, there's an urge for us to participate in all these obscene talks and all those things. It's hard because it, it glorifies flesh. It doesn't glorify Father. And when you think about it, you know, all those anger, all those jokes, all those ridicule and sarcastic talk and all those things, those things are reflective of who we are currently. And God doesn't want us to live like that. That's why it's a call for imitation, true submission. And as we continue to, you know, gather onto him, seek him, then we, we, we are continually cleansed and changed through his word. Then we will be filled and all that urge that we have. It will be urged for God, not urged to be in a relationship that doesn't lead to life, but to lead to, that, that leads to death. But if we continue to, feel that urge with his presence with his word then it will lead to life then we can re- truly reflect who he is in our relationship with our children with our work colleagues and also in the community in our church you know you know different places and i hope god will help us thank you very much Sister Bridget. more contributions please uh, praise the lord hallelujah yeah Thank you, Brian, for a wonderful message. And thank you, Sister Bridget. Um, it's really important for us to understand what it is. Relationship, separation, it's really, it helps us as believers. It helps us to, to edify us to, to, be, to be able to guide our ways. I, I just want to share my, some of my experiences when I was growing up. When I was in um, secondary school, just one, um, I was in this, in, I was with, with some, some of a group of people. It's like they were, they have something they were trying to do. They were doing, the gang was getting stronger. So it wasn't really glorifying God, but their life was, wasn't really building me up anyway. So I was, because we came, we always go together, come from school, December, to we leave, we go. So it's like what they were doing started to affect me somehow. What do I have to do? I had to change that school. That was what I did. I don't know how God did it. That I had to leave that particular school because their life they were living was not pleasing God. So I, that was what I did. Secondly, when I was I moved to Equatorial Guinea, I was with her brother. Um, he was, um, he was, I don't know the car, he was living somehow a life. So it's just like, he didn't want to be open to people. So he was just like, he was involving me into it. So if people come, he was making me to lie. Maybe he's not around. If someone comes, tell them I'm not around. Why, you, why he's around? 
I said, no, a time came, I said, no, I can't continue with this kind of uh, relationship. I had to move out. What I did, I have to move out, even though it's not, it wasn't really easy for me to move out from where he was staying. So I had to take that decision. I, I told him, say, I can't be staying with you. Maybe we will we, we'll still be working together, but living with you, that's the only thing I know that is not giving, it's making me uncomfortable for me to be lying over what I don't know about. So I had to move out. That's one of the things I did there at that time. So it was it, it really helped me spiritually because anytime I lie, my spirit was no longer uh, comfortable. You understand? So these are the things I did. So in this, that's one of the things that helped me today to be able to know, move, move on in Christendom. So when things are not wrong, I'll be able to find out what is the sense of it. So for me to for us to have still have intimacy with God, these are we have to check out, check ourselves, what is really going on, what kind of relationship do we have? Maybe sometimes it might be the person might be a breadwinner to us. It might it might be bread uh, the person providing everything, but yet we'll be able to understand what is exactly what we want, what is um what exactly what will be the outcome of it at the end of the day. I want to read Second Corinthians chapter 6, 17. Say, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separated, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. These are the things we need to do. Come out from them. No matter, even if we, they are the one that providing everything, they're the one that do every pay us. Sometimes we we'll, we'll see that the, the situation that they are the one that pay maybe house, house rent, school fees, everything. So, but still, we should understand that God is not mocked with all of this. May God help us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Brian. It is, you know, very, if, if our text, that short text for today, you know, it said, don't participate in these things. These things does not reflect who Christ is. So for us to truly, you know, make it stand, then we have to know who we are. Like you said, if your spirit is being quickened, like this is not what I called you to. Like God is quickening you. Like, I, why do you keep talking? Why do you keep, you know, getting involved in these arguments and talks and things? You know, if my spirit is quickening, that means that's God's will for me not to be involved. Don't participate in these things. To reflect him, not reflect flesh. Because most of the times when we get in all these things, we are glorifying who we are, which is flesh. And most of, that is, if it's not most of the time, all the times. So for us, it's a call for self-examination so that we can come to God and seek him so that we will be changed. And from there, we can now reflect who Christ is by the way we live. Then we can, those people, they can see that, oh, this is not, you know, you know this is who we, this person is. This is, you know, for us, then we can let go. Then, then we can, because if we continue to reflect him and there's nothing changing, then gradually for us not to be confound to, you know, flesh, then we can, you know, separate ourselves even without hate. Because all this is graciously, just like our uh, devotion has said, graciously, we can reflect to Christ this. And God is the one doing the work anyway. So we shouldn't condemn other people. God is the one doing the work. Because God is doing the work in us by quickening us when we get in deep with all these iniquities. He's quickening us and telling you, this is not the will for me. Well, this is not my will for you. And, you know, as we are reflecting who he is to, God is going to quicken those other people through his own work because the Holy Spirit is the one doing the work. It's not us. No matter what we say or we try to argue or do anything, we cannot change people. God is in the business of reconciling people to himself. So I hope God will help us. Do we have any other contribution? Do we have any other person on the line that wants to share anything? If, if we don't have any other thing, like I said, it's been exhausting. And I thank God, you know, 
for all the contributions. Like I said yesterday, and what Sister Bridget said, Sister Tolu, Sister Tolu, even Brother Bright just now, you know, we're quicken, you know, to imitate God. And if, like I said, even those bad relationships that we have from beginning, God is using it to change us. Because as we seek him, it will be reflecting like this is, you know, it, like I said, it, 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 like it was said in Timothy, like the words of God, you know, good for inspiration to convict us, to, to rebuke us, to correct us, you know, and to equip us to be able to do what we are called to do. So the reflection of our relationships, you know, should be a reflection of who God is. If we are not, if we are, you know, involved in obscene talk and all these ill things, that is not God's will for us. And it's very, it's very informative when God is revealing himself in us in this way that we should change our ways by abiding in him more so that we can, we can grow forth fruit in him and reflect it all, the, all to the name of his glory, not reflecting flesh and all those things. So it's easy for us to say, oh, I don't want that person to be my friend. But what, what are we reflecting? That we're reflecting the love of God or we're reflecting flesh. You know, it's easy for us to judge other people, but let's start for, they say the household of the Lord is going to be judged first. So let's, you know, reflect Christ. And it, 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 now, it will now be easy for us to, to depart from all the iniquity and reflecting in our relationships also. So, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, your, for the opportunity once again that you've given us to, to gather. It is the opportunity to even come to your presence, to, 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 to be inspired by your spirit, to, to be revealed unto your will for us. This alone, it is, there's, there's no way for us, there's no love that can be more than this for you to reflect what you want, your will for our, for our lives in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we thank you for the sacrifice that you have made for us to be able to even hear you, to know you as we come to you, as we want to continue our day today. Father, we pray for the grace of Lord to truly be revealed to, and the equipment to be able to receive wisdom, to listen. You know, most of the times we are being revealed to, but we just take it in stride and keep going without focus, without, you know, paying attention of your will for us at that particular time. Your will for us is to constantly seek you. That is why in Matthew 7, 7, they said that we should continue and perpetually be in communion by seeking and asking and knocking so that we will be revealed to and we will be equipped to be able to do what you are revealing to us by time. But at the grace of Lord to be able to, you know, to manifest your will through this word that you've revealed to us that we should be separated. We should be separated and consecrated unto thee through your word and your spirit to be made whole so that we can reveal you in all our relationships, not reveal flesh. And to be prompted by the Holy Spirit to, re, to, 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 to cut the cord and the ties to iniquity by living for you and be separate from all forms of iniquities. Father, thank you for this word. These words, let it manifest in our life. The equipment to be able to do this will that you have revealed to us, not to continue to live in flesh, not to continue to, to be conformed, conformed to worldliness, but to be separate and be renewed daily in our life. That is what we're praying for. As we are gathered unto you, help us, O oh Lord, to truly yield and surrender. A call for surrender, that is the call for our life, to yield our will, not to continue to live for flesh, but to live for your spirit. But that the wisdom to continually seek you, like you said in the word in James, that if we lack wisdom, let us ask it. Father, we are pleading for the wisdom, wisdom to seek you part time, not to just continue to live a life, you know, in mediocrity Amen. or lukewarmness, but to live for you, not to live for flesh. That is what we're praying for. Father, we've heard words, we've, we've been, you know, taught and preached to, but we'll continue to manifest flesh. But this is not your will for us. The grace, O oh Lord, to be grounded, for these words to be planted and made manifest, to go forth fruit, food of repentance for us to forsake the iniquities of our heart. But the fruit of the Spirit to grow in love in you and for our love to translate in, transcend in all our relationships, for people to see you when they see us, not to see flesh. 
in all to your own to your to the glory of your holy name thank you father we commit that day unto you we thank you for the opportunity to gather and we continue pray unto other members of our household and the household of faith that are going to hear this word father let this word let it germinate in your life let it bring forth fruit let the fruit honor you Amen. and as we go today everything we're going to be doing help us to find ways to seek you and to manifest your will in all we do you know, our obedience is based on our actions and our actions most of the time are based on the relationships we have. Father, we commit our relationships, our family, our business, our community onto you and the household of faith. You know, the grace reflects you in all ways, in all things, to come to the fullness of your knowledge, of your love and your will for us in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for who you are. We extend our prayer to all members of our household and the household of faith. But I the grace to encounter you today in all time and to be made right in the union with Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, Pastor, you have you have a word for us before we share it. Very much, brother. Thank you, everybody. We I think, you. <laughs> I, I think, <laughs> I, think um, I, I just want to say something, and I don't want anybody to misinterpret what we've been saying for the past three days, um, because you'll be hearing, oh, leave, you'll be hearing, let go, you'll be hearing, you've been hearing, uh, check, check your relationship, it's not working, this is not what we're talking about here, what we are talking about is that when things that, that are going to stand between you and God, that's going to stop your progress in life, that is actually bringing you out, you need to reevaluate yourself. And thank God, because since yes, you've been talking about, it is not about the others, but it's about us. Are we checking ourselves to find out where we stand with God? Because when things are working well between us and God, he said, even the people that we think that they will not work with us, he said, they will be at peace with us. We will have love to share with people that we're not even able to love. We will be able to receive love from people that are not able to love us. That's very paramount. And thank you, Brian, because you keep on stressing that, that the fundamental of a good relationship and having a successful relationship is having a solid relationship with God. Once that is clear, everything else falls in place. Let's continue, continually work in our relationship with God because that is where we are going to be able to. Because if you look at the verse that we read today in this devotional today, it's talking about the, the, the living water is given to us in that book of John 4, 13 and 14. It says, out of you, the living spring water will flow out. Are we getting in that place where God can flow its water through us that we'll be able to give the water that God has given us. That is the question that we need to ask ourselves. We might say it's those people. We might say my partner. We might say other people. But what about us? What about us? What about us? That is the question. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can't even begin to think of anything you must ask him to come into your life you must ask him give yourself to him and tell him to forgive of our sin and then from there you can start asking and confess that jesus you're the lord of my life then after that look for a bible believing church tell them you just became born again they will work with you if you can't find one go online rccg.org you will find the redeemed christian church of god close to you and they will be willing to work with you for the rest of us please let's work on our relationship with god when we better eat the bible say even your enemy will be at peace with you say so if your way pleases the lord even your enemy will be at peace with you the enemy of joseph because of his of the Clothes of, of a coat of many color. They ate at him from the beginning, but at the end, because his way was right with the Lord, they come at peace with him. And I pray that everything that looks like it's rough right now, God will find a way to speak peace to them and he will restore each and every one of us in a good relationship with him in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the word. Uh, let's, let's share the grace, please, in fellowship. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of and the sweet fellowship of uh, the Holy Amen. Surely, the Lord's grace shall fill us 
God in the days of our lives. And we shall go in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the one the Lord is with us. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sure. Okay, everybody. Have a blessed day. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you all, and uh, may He bless you us and grant us all peace in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my. God bless you. Bye. Thank you, man. God bless you too, man.